Hey, this is Aaron with Faith to Walk Ministries and here with another Bible review. Now, this won't be a premium Bible, but it's going to be a good study Bible for some of you Bible geeks out there like me. Um, it's not like I said, it's not going to be premium. This is my everyday carry right now, the Schuyler Canterbury. Um, wearing it very nice, getting very, very soft. Um, this one's about one that a lot of people have been wondering about, the uh, Hebrew Greek Keyword Study Bible. Um, it has your guarantee right there. It just comes in a you know, regular box. But this is a Bible that is going to be used in your studies. Um, it is a uh, weighty Bible. It is a wide Bible. Uh, might not be one you want to carry around, but you can if you want to. Might get some muscles. Um, but it's a really good Bible for study. It, it really brings out, once again, the Hebrew and the Greek words. It's always important to know, of course, there's uh, one of the rules you hear me say all the time is all doctrine comes from scriptures only taken in context compared with other passages of scriptures. And I'm going to be um, explaining one of those here in a little bit um, that goes into deeper. Another card it does give you, and this is in the Bible itself, but it's the gra grammatical codes to the grammatical notations. And I'm going to show you why this is an important part of understanding some of the Bible. Um, the Bible itself, once again, it's not a premium Bible. This is a genuine leather. Um, I do probably, probably believe it's going to be pigskin. It's not edge lying. It's not perimeter stitch. It's just a paste down, but it's done very well. The folds are done pretty good. Uh, once again, not edge line. It is Smythe sewn. So the pages will be, uh, not falling out. You don't have to worry about scratching this. Uh, most genuine leathers, uh, a lot of times they'll feel like bonded, but this one has a, it's a thick one. It's not a real thin one, so it has some thick leather in there. Um, kind of nice. And you might hit, like even in this corner, might get loose here, so I'm going to have to glue that sometime. But this is not going to be walking around with me. This is just going to be uh, just something that you would just have uh, on your desk and your bookshelf and bring out when you need it. Um, you do have the, uh, the executive editor, Spiros to Hades, um, right there. And it's, and it's published really by, let's see here, AMG. And it's, uh, stands for Advancing the Ministries of the Gospel. And they've been doing this since uh, 1942. Uh, let's see here. You do have a personal word from the executive editor. And a little bit on the second revised edition. Now, I'm going to go through this. Um, before I go through that, I'm going to just let you know, like I said, it is a big Bible. Um, it's pretty thick. I don't have the dimensions, but I would say that's a good two inches. does have your go guilting. Hebrew, Greek, keyword study Bible, King James version, red letter edition. You can get this in other versions as well. This one is uh, pretty well, I would say, like a wide margin. It has, oh, I would say a good inch, at least on the sides, not on the top and the bottom, probably a half an inch. Well, maybe an inch, I don't know. Size definitely an inch. So you have places to do your notes. I'm going to show you the first, and it's really nice. Uh, good study Bibles are going to have this little explanation. I'm going to just cover it so you know what is out there and what it offers. So it does have, like this is an excerpt from the book of Acts, it does have a book summaries, and it goes into a lot of the, the historical, cultural settings and things like that. Um, let's go through, and when you read the Bible, let me just show you this. So you're just going to have a lot of numbers, a lot of underlying, bold numbers. You're going to have uh, numbers that's not very bold. You have center column references. You have letters. So we're going to go into that by looking at this. So once again, you have the introduction. is given for each book. Here it shows uh, a bold number right here. It says identifies the key words or phrases that may be studied further by looking up the test numbers in the appropriate dictionary. I'm going to show you that in a minute. You have a Hebrew and New, and New Testament. And it's uh, linked to Strong's as well. Right here, you have single... Uh, italicized superior letters, preceding a word, refer to cross-references. 
This is something that I think is really cool. And you're going to see more of this. I'm going to show you that. Like a PPT, uh, multiple superior letters uh, from F, M, and N, italized, preceding word of the New Testament, refer to the grammatical structure of the Greek word and are explained in the grammatical notation section. And that is really cool. I'm going to show you what that is. And some verses you're going to see little uh, little keys. And that's say there's notes in the bottom of the page. Identifies exploring notes at the bottom of the page. Uh, of course, you're, it is red letters, so the words of Christ are in red. You have um, italics marginal notes signifying alternate readings of the biblical text. Now, I haven't looked into that and see if it's uh, kind of complements the King James. I, look, I might look at another passage here in a moment. Uh, let's see. A bow, that one has two numbers. Multiple numbers indicate that an underlying word or phrase is translated from more than one word in the original language. Interesting. Italics are used in the text to indicate that words that are not found in the original Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, or Greek text, but are implied by it, which that means is uh, that's words supplied by the King James translators to help the sentence be understood better. In uh, inferior numbers, you get some that are bold, some that are uh, not bold, indicate that the entry in the, in the dictionary of the corresponding Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek word contains only Strong's definitions. There are more bold superior numbers, indicates that the entry in the dictionary for the corresponding Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek word has additional information taken from the AMG's complete word study dictionaries. And you got some other Roman numerals. Signify that the little renderings, alternate translations, or explanations are given in the cross-references. And it does have subject headings throughout the Bible. So, actually, it's a, it's a pretty good Bible for studying. It is, it is weighty, so I would probably say, once again, this would be a desk, uh, something you put on your bookshelf and bring out when you need it. For instance, say you're reading, I'm going to show you, a, for instance, of that grammatical notations. Um... In a moment, let's go on and just look at the. I, I want to show you some things so, so quickly, but I want to go on and show you what the Bible has. So it goes all the way through Revelation. So Revelation ends there. So all of that is just your notes, dictionaries, things like that. Right here is the same thing that little card I showed you. Grammatical codes to the grammatical notations. And this is something I'm going to show you that's really cool. Remember notations, and this breaks down further what these are, so it explains them. Also have a pretty good concordance, and it does have, uh, you know, the people in it as well, such as like Abraham. And you have the first verse, usually, where that starts. Pretty good size concordance. And back here, transliteration of Hebrew Bible. So it tells you how to, you can look at those and kind of see how to pronounce as well. But don't fear. If you don't know how to pronounce it, they give you a pronunciation right after that. Like uh, Abdem, if you has the Hebrew word here, it has how you would pronounce it. So that's very interesting. So this is all keyed from the text. So a word will have the key number, and you look it back here. It's the Old Testament Dictionary. <laughs> it's thick. And then you have your New Testament. And of course, you have the Greek alphabet. Can I pronounce those? Even has breathing marks. Something that's cool. Uh, so once again, on these... You got agathos, as you have pronounced it. And it goes into a lot of detail about some of these words. But once again, as with everything, remember when I said that all, how we come across all doctrine. When you read a word, a lot of times in the Greek, Hebrew and Greek, it's going to give you a lot of different ways that word can be used. So a lot of people twist scriptures. Yes, I say twist scriptures because they'll, they'll read the Greek, they'll read a word, and it looks like the word they would want the verse to say, so it actually can change the meaning. So how you read the word is in context. And does, it, does what you're saying about that verse, 
that you're trying to change the word in, um, is it now contradicting other scriptures? Is it now totally being saying it can't be that because of the context you're reading it from? And we're going to look at that one of those here in a moment. All right. So I'm going to look at two passages and how this Bible is useful. All right, so you have that. You do have some uh, little note pages back here. Well, not many, just a few. And it has your maps, just basic maps, no index. All right, so let's go into how this can be used pretty good. So say you're reading John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him... To them gave you power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Now, you remember I said uh, this is mainly for study. Now, you could take this, this Bible into the pulpit or teaching and preaching, but it's broken. Um, with those underlines, with those numbers, um, I would not preach out of this. I, hey, if somebody wants to, they definitely can. But personally, I would not. That just seems too broken for me. I mean, when I can go to, like any of the Bible, Skyler, John 1, 12. But as a man receive him, to they give him the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Well, that is so much easier to read um, than that. So this is mainly for study, not so much used for your reading, devotions, teaching, and preaching. But it's good to prepare. Uh, so let me just, once again, give you an example. So as many as receive him, they gave him the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Okay, now this one I'm going to back up to verse 11 as well. And his own received, now we're going to look at this, received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So this is the same word as down here, received. Notice it's a, there's an A-O behind, behind received. So when you come back here, right before the concordance, you have their grammatical. So let's look up A-O. A-O is aorist. And then you go over here. So received as aorist tense is used for simple undefined action in the indicative mood that aorist tense usually notes a simple act of occurring in past time. It should be distinguished from the imperfect tense which signifies continuous action in past time. With few exceptions, whenever the aorist tense is used in any mood other than the indicative, the verb does not have any temporal significance. In other words, it refers only to the reality of an event or action. So in other words, verse 12, but as many as received him. So that is a moment when somebody receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, a time in the past. There was a, a definite time, a period, a moment where they received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They became saved. They became born again. Now, when you look at believed, there's a PPT, even to them that believe on his name. So PPT, down here, present participle. Well, what's that mean? So let's take a look. Let's just say 39. All right. Present participle expresses continuous or repeated action. It does not in itself indicate the time of the action, but when its relationship to the main verb is, what's it say? Temporal. It usually signifies action contemporary with that of the main verb. Example, while they were eating, present participle, he broke the bread. Mark 14, 22. So going back to John 1, 12, now we can understand what it's talking about. So received is at a given point in time. Believe is present 
once again, PPT is your present participle, which means it's a continuous action. A believer believes and trusts Christ all the time, every day. Not just the time in the past, and they gave up on him, but every day. So that kind of helps you get a definition of that. So let's go to, and one, you know, once again, um, you know, we were talking about uh, some of this, Titus chapter 3. You know, that passage uh, talks about a heretic. So I'm going to show you why it's important we take things in context. Titus chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Now, some want to say that that means a man that causes division. Well, there's a problem with that. If we go with the uh, word division from the Greek, there is a big problem. Because in Luke chapter 12, verse 51, look what it says. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you, nay, but rather division. Well, we got a problem. Because if we say this word in verse 10 is division and Jesus came, or divisive, and Jesus came to bring division, that means he's divisive. That means we're supposed to reject Jesus. Well, here's the problem. So you can't just go to this and pick the Greek word that seems good. You can't just go to this. And let me show you an example. So can the word here that we're going to look at mean division? Yes. But if you look in this passage, but avoid village questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. These people were bringing false teachings against Scripture, where they had no biblical support, for they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. This person is a false teacher. So to say that's just a vision, once again, would have a problem with causing Jesus' division. You would have to reject him. So... Let's go to the Greek word, 141. So let's go to the Greek dictionary. All right. Um, it's the Greek word right there. It's pronounced hahiretikos from the same, 140. Look at what it means. One who creates dissension, comma, introduces errors. Okay. What's that mean? It means a false teacher, someone who's teaching false doctrine, a heretic. So, and sometimes you'll have a Greek word, it might, it might have a, a definition of the word, another definition of the word, and you can't just pick with the word you want, because you can actually try to superimpose that in the verse and change the meaning. So once again, why did they use the words they chose? It's because they had the scriptures, all doctrine from scriptures only, but they had to look the whole context to see what it said. And the Greek word that it was, they used the word that fit it in context and also is in harmony with other scriptures. If you interject a word into a verse and all of a sudden it's not in context anymore, or there's other verses that totally contradict it, you use the wrong word. See, a lot of people preach that way, and they'll say, well, the best word here is, and they change the verse. You can't do that. This Bible doesn't allow you to do it. It just helps you see the words that they used and how they came back with that. But you always remember that rule. All doctrines taken from Scripture only, taken in context, compared with other passages of Scriptures. Even if you're using a Bible like this, um, it can get you in trouble unless you know that one. So I'll encourage you, if you're studying the word, try to know what the word says. If you come across a word you're having difficulty with, then use this to try to figure out a little deeper meanings for it. Um, so that's the review. Once again, it's a good Bible to have for a study to help out. But the biggest thing, and don't forget, as right before you uh, read the scriptures, First of all, be, be saved, be a Christian, because the Holy Spirit, the author, will be in you and helps you understand scriptures. He illuminates it for you. Pray before you read. Um, let God speak to you through it. Um, I tell you what, there are people and pastors and teachers 
for decades and decades and centuries have understood and preached this word so well, they never had anything like that. It's a help. But let the Holy Spirit uh, just show you what he wants to show you for your life and as you preach to those you preach to. Hey, thanks for watching. God bless.